Hey there folks, and welcome to my kitchen where we are about to cook up something hot and spicy. No, not a gourmet meal, but an exciting journey into the world of programmatic SEO. So first, grab your apron, because we are about to steer things up by looking at our website moonbit.ai and how we use PSEO using tools like Airtable, Webflow and WhaleSync. So let's turn up the heat, bring out the SEO ingredients, and let's get this party boiling. Now for the exciting part. Before we start, let's just define what is programmatic SEO. In simple terms, it is publishing on a large scale, a lot of blog posts and landing pages. By doing so, you have the ability to rank for keywords as well as long tail keywords. One famous example is Nomad List, run by the famous solopreneur Pieter Levels. If you search on Google best places to live in Asia, you will see Nomad List showing up. And from there, you can see the ranking for different cities. And if you click for more details, you have more information regarding each city. And this is all done programmatically to boost the SEO for Nomad List. All right, let's dive into it and how we exactly did it for Moonbit. Okay, so we are starting here at our new landing page, which is the crypto tax overview of moonbit.ai. We literally just published this yesterday on Webflow after spending most of the week putting together our programmatic SEO database and publishing it to Webflow. So what we did here is we created a tax overviews of more than for 50 plus countries. So we have starting from A and then all the way down to Vietnam, I think it is. Yes. So again, all of these, we did not manually input it into Webflow, but we have imported it, which I will show in a minute. And if you go for more details, for example, Mongolia, first of all, we put on top more of a call to action. So people can see this every time they find us. And then we scroll down, you then have Mongolia and some information like tax overview. Again, for each page is not always fully detailed. It is mostly focusing on summarizing the information we found online. And also we have some helpful sources and of course a disclaimer. And if you scroll down, you can also check out all the more countries here below. We actually wanted to maybe just show the next three countries on the list, but with Webflow, this was a bit more complicated than expected. So I essentially just put in the whole database um, on each of these pages. I did this mainly because I want to do a lot of internal linking, which will boost our SEO authority. And again, you can see it for here, each country here, we have Indonesia and each has a slightly different overview with different information. To create this summary, we actually use uh, JetGPT a lot. So we gave JetGPT a lot of different sources and then we got it to summarize the different information for each country. You click back here, you have then all the countries again. So how did we do this? First of all, I created an air table that looks something like this, where we have a tax list and it's a grid view. Um, we only created one view, so we did not create multiple views where you then could do different references, which is a common way of doing it. In this case, we just created one view and also in Webflow, we created one CMS collection. So in here, you see the different countries on the left. You see the different sources that we gathered. So here are a list for the different sources. Here is the overview which essentially is what you just saw before. For each country, we have an overview with all the specific details. And one thing to note here is that this field, we're using the rich uh, text formatting for this case. For the description, this is what we're using on the outside. So this is the description right here. And I purposely made it cut off at I think around 100 characters. So it wouldn't get too long and also it would keep the same length for every country. Then we have the name in the slug, which is really just used for Webflow collection. We have a modified date, which is what you're seeing here. And then we have the meta title and the meta description. Now to get the meta title, all I did was just put the crypto tax overview and then input in the country. I'm not that familiar with Webflow. So actually, sorry, I'm not that familiar with Airtable. So to do this, I actually put this information into Google Sheet and then made this list. For meta description, each meta description was created by providing GPT with this overview and then it would then output this information, which I then gave inside of here. I would like to also note that in the beginning, we I actually forgot about meta title and meta description. So I had to come back and change it. I also forgot about some description of this one. So it was a few times of back and forth to achieve this table. Overall, I started on this table on Tuesday and I finished it yesterday. So Thursday. Okay. So what I'm going to start first with is showing you what I was planning to do and in the end, I did something else, which I will show afterwards. So my initial plan was simply to take this table, right? So take this table, download the CSV, and then inside of Webflow, so this is our Webflow for Moonbit, I would then, let's say, create a new 
um, collection. Okay, so looking at Webflow, now we have the CSV downloaded. The idea that I was initially planning to do was just have a collection and then import the CSV file. Now, the reason why I ended up not doing this is because when I do this, so, okay, so this is how it looks like. This is actually pretty okay. But if you see here in the overview, this information is no longer formatted. And this is an issue with, with Airtable. So with Airtable, once you export it, all the rich edit formatting is getting removed, which is kind of pointless for us. So I didn't want to do this, right? So I wanted to have the format that I created over here. At least it has some bullet points. It might not be the prettiest, but it was working. But it's definitely better than just having all the data like this. So this was my issue. Uh, I was thinking, should I just manually, you know, copy paste it into uh, from Airtable to Webflow? But even this wouldn't work. So when you copy paste it from Airtable to Webflow, it would also break the formatting. And that is why I went away from using this approach by simply downloading into CSV from Airtable and then uploading it into Webflow. So the solution I found was called Whale Sync. So Whale Sync essentially just syncs your applications. Whenever you make a change to whatever Webflow or make a change to Airtable, it would then automatically sync this information between the two different applications. Now I checked online and I saw that they were supporting the integration between Airtable and Webflow as well as the formatting, which is why I went with these guys. Now the pricing I found was a, is a bit steep. So you have here $39 per month or $79 for startup. Um, I found it a bit steep, but again, they're giving a 14 days free trial, which I'm still on at this point in time. And going over to the dashboard of RailSync, honestly, this was super easy to do. All you're gonna do is just create a new base, which looks like this. I'm just gonna disable it. So it simply starts with connecting the apps. So I chose Airtable. And then I chose my Webflow project. And this connection, it really takes you, you know, it takes a few seconds really. And once you have done this, you just click map tables. And then for the map tables, you then select the view you want to do from Airtable and then what collection you want to select in the Webflow project. And then here you can see the fields that I have uh, synced with each other. So again, I made sure that the naming in Airtable and Webflow collection was matching. So you see here all the information. And then all you gotta do is just save changes. Once you have saved the changes, uh, it will then start syncing and it really takes maximum a few minutes. Again, it depends on how many rows of data you have. And this is pretty much what we did. So we went with Whale Sync, and by using this solution, we were able to get all of this data into Webflow collection in minutes. And this is what you're seeing right now on our website is all in this one called crypto tax rates. And it's currently synced between Whale Sync and this collection in Webflow. Now, one thing I want to mention is that um, when I first did the syncing between Whale Sync, well, using Whale Sync, uh, I was getting an error, and that was because you have to first publish the website using uh, showing with a new collection. So even though the collection is empty, you still have to publish it for Whale Sync to actually connect between Airtable and Webflow. Otherwise, it is unable to find the CMS, CMS collection ID. So that was the only issue I had. And afterwards, it was super easy to do. I, you know, I was adding information all the time in my Airtable, and then it was just syncing into Whale Sync. Now, again, you can still use the first way of just downloading the CSV and, and importing it into Webflow. Just keep in mind this rich format editing issue inside of Airtable, but still, otherwise it would probably work fine. If you have a bit of money available, you can definitely go for Whale Sync, or alternatively, you can also just use something like Sapier or Makers, I believe, because Webflow has a pretty good API as well as Airtable, so you can also connect them using a tool like that, which is probably cheaper, but probably the setup is just slightly longer. I just found WhaleSync super easy to get started really in, in a matter of like a few minutes. But again, I'm not really sure whether I'm going to go for this considering the price points that I'm paying for this. So for me, it is $39 plus the VAT of 27% because of where Moonbit is located. So I hope this little demonstration showed you how you can use programmatic SEO using a database like Airtable or even just a Google Sheet and then push it into a collection. Now again, we made it very simple with just one collection, but you can easily have multiple collections that are using multi-reference in case you want to do it by categories or you know whatever you prefer. But at least this was very easy to do.
So if you like this little video, don't forget to like it and subscribe. And if you have any questions or have any comments, please let me know below.